Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this video is part two of my how to structure a software engineering project with Taskade two-part tutorial series. So this two-part series was very kindly sponsored by Taskade. So thank you very much Taskade for sponsoring this two-part video. And in this series, what I did in the first part is go over the basics of Taskade, the different features that this application has, how the platform works, how you can use it to maximize your productivity. And in the second part, we're going to take what we learned in part one and apply it to our very niche sort of career type, which is software engineering. We will be learning how to use Taskade to structure our software engineering projects. So without further ado, let's get started. So I've created a completely different account for Taskade. So in the first video, I showed you my personal Taskade account and sort of gave you a brief overview over how I use it and the different features that we have. Now, this is a fresh brand new account. You can see there is one workspace here, which is called Software Engineering Projects, and it is empty. So I will be creating the first project with you guys, showing you how I'm going to do it and then how I'm going to exploit this application to, to be able to create a software engineering project in a productive way. So let's get started. So now we're just going to go to new project and create a blank project. So the project is sort of the main unit in Taskade. This is where our software engineering project will be. So that is pretty straightforward. Now, one feature of Taskade that I did not cover in the previous video that I'm hoping to cover in this video is templates. So Taskade offers us a very quick way for us to create projects based on a previously existing template. For example, I can choose to create a project based on this weekly planner template right here. So if I press on it, I get an overview of how this planner looks like. So this planner, it's a template, it already exists. There is this week, there is goals, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and like this is where you would fill in your tasks. So if you choose to like this, plan this planner, this template, you just press on tap to create and create a brand new project in your Taskade workspace that strictly follows this planner or this template actually. Or you can maybe choose to have a meeting agenda and then you would have this other template or a project board, which also is another way to structure your projects with Taskade and so on. So what we're going to do first is that we're going to create our very own template. So this is to show you how powerful Taskade can be. Not only can you create your customized projects, not only can you create projects that follow a certain template, but you can also create your very own template to, to reuse and restructure in the future. All right, so this is my template. So what I'm going to type here is my project title. So obviously this does not follow a specific project. I'm creating this as a template to reuse later on in my next projects. So this is the project title. I can give it an icon. So let's say I give it something related to um, computers since this is a coding or a software engineering project. All right, so I've created the project title. I can create different tags for it. So for example, I'm going to tag it as let's say project and then I'm going to tag it as something else. Like let's say this project will be made in Python and I can give it a color and add another tag. So then I can, oops, okay. Then I can press on the tags to assign them to this specific project. All right, now how do I want to structure my project? Now, there are many different ways that you can structure a software engineering project. A very common way is to follow the scrum method where the teams, where teams at companies usually follow two week sprints in which they, this is a bit standard. There are different variations of this actually, but in general, teams would follow two week sprints and then every two weeks, teams would decide on what they will work on for the next two weeks, have a sort of to-do list for this, create different in progress statuses for these to do lists. And I will be going over all of this momentarily and then review everything at the end of the two weeks to see what they've completed and what they haven't. So we will be sort of starting at this common point while also adding different maybe customizations to this. And especially that this is a sort of a um, template for uh, structuring your personal projects. However, you can use it to invite other members and have a sort of team that works together on this project. All right, so we're going to follow this to do doing done structure, right? So 
As I said before, these teams usually in software engineering companies, they would follow two week sprints. So what we're going to do is we're going to create first a block and let's say it's going to have bullets or checkboxes. So let's go with bullets and this will be our to do list. So to do or all the things that we are going to be doing with this certain project. Now, the next thing is we're going to create another bullet and this will be doing. So this is what our team is currently working on. This is what our team is currently doing. Next, we're going to create another one and we're going to say this is for pro or features that are in review. And finally, we're going to create one for the features that are OK, just duplicated that are done. All right. So I've created four blocks. Blocks are sort of the next thing that falls under projects in the Taskade hierarchy. So I may go here and change list to board and I get this board view of my project. Now, what I'm going to do is actually close this thing right here. So this part enables us to start calls or have a chat. So I can just type, um, okay, I can just type hi and send it. It enables us to have start calls and have a chat option while working on our project. This way teams can collaborate seamlessly and very easily, but I'm going to be closing it since we're sort of doing this as a solo project for now. I mean, you can invite your team members and have this follow the exact same structure. All right. So here we have this project title. We have the, the to do, we have the doing interview and done. The way this is going to work is here. We will have a list of features that we want to add to this project. So let's say, for example, I'm building a project that is a UI and a database for a supermarket. So this is an interface that supermarket cashiers can use to log different products that were bought or sold and um, checked out at the supermarket. So to do here would be to add the different features that we were using for the supermarket. Now, things we want to build, we want to build the interface, we want to build the database, we want to build different functionalities, handlers for the buttons and the UI elements. Now, the next thing we can do is here we have the doing. So let's say, for example, I started working on the interface for this application. I'm setting up the background. I'm setting up the UI elements. This would be within my doing. Once that's done, it doesn't immediately go to the done part, although you can choose to have it immediately as done. This is this depends highly on your type of preference. But once that's done, basically, you can just take it here to in review where you're testing it, you're reviewing it, you're checking for bugs. And then finally, you can move it to the done part as soon as you're 100 percent certain that this is exactly what you need. Now, going back to the list view. What we can do is also add different blocks that we might also need in our project. So the project will have this sort of basic structure, which enables us to monitor the project flow, if whether or not we're completing the features, how on time we are in terms of uh, meeting deadlines, in terms of finishing tasks. However, a project is not only made, of, made up of the tasks. A project is also related to the resources this project has. So I'm going to create a block here called resources and I'm actually going to move this block way up. Um, OK, that was a mistake. I'm going to move this block to the top right here. So I want this top part here to contain the resources for my current project. And obviously here we're not filling anything. We're not populating these guys because this is a template at the end of the day. So I will be creating the resources. Now, another thing maybe I want to add is client contact info. So if you want all of these guys to be in one place, I'm just going to put this here and also move it up. And let's say now I can also access the client contact info. All right. So that was a mistake. Once again, I move it to be right here. All right. And now you might you might be thinking to yourself at this moment, OK, this is very useful. I do need my resources for my project. I do need my client contact info. Once I'm done, I want to show them my progress. But this is maybe crowding my interface for this Taskade app way too much. I want to directly look at my tasks. I want to see my to do's. I want to see what I'm doing. I don't want to see these all the time. I want I want to only access them when needed. Well, in that case, you would just simply collapse these parts. And then you would only have to see these guys right here, and then you would open these and close them as you need them, which is another very useful feature. I believe that 
can really help keep your um, view of the application completely clean and productive. All right, so now we have created this template. We're done with it. What we can do next is we can just simply exit. And now we can see that we have this template right here. All right. So now I go back to projects. We see we still ha we don't have any new project in this workspace. I have a template, but not a project. So I want to create the supermarket project that I was telling you guys about. So I go again and I go to new project. I, I say I create a blank project. No, I actually want to go to project title. So now I create it from this and I immediately start typing. So I want to give this a title called supermarket. And you see this top thing here for the templates, it disappears automatically if you just immediately start working on the application, on the uh, project and start filling, filling it in. So this means you have created a project from this template. All right, so supermarket interface. And then I'm, go I'm going to add to do's. So the to do would be to build a login or auth system. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I want to, for example, um, let's say create the interface. And then I'm going to add database for products. Well, this is very like extremely simplified, but you kind of get the point of how we are sort of structuring this project. We have different to do's. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, for example, I am currently working on a certain feature. Now, before I do that, actually, I'm going to switch to the board view since this is actually quite common to appear in a board view. All right, so I scroll back here and let's say, what am I doing? So I can drag this guy over here and put it here. So by dragging it, I moved it from the to do section to the doing section and basically told myself or told my team that I am currently working on building the login and auth system. Now I can add different things to the hierarchy. So I can say, for example, um, add create account screen and then add login screen, right? I can say I want to add the forgot password functionality and so on. So you can add and remove as many features as you want. So I'm currently doing this. And then let's say what's in review. I, cur I just finished my creating an account screen. I move it to in review. So now that I've moved it in review, maybe I'm testing it, maybe I'm just checking for bugs, I'm working with it. Once I'm done, all I have to do is move it to done. And this is basically how you build this type of workflow with Taskade, and this is how you structure a software engineering project. Whenever you want, you can just scroll back here. Actually, let me close the call thing again and check your resources. For example, you're using, let's say, let's add a tag, you're using Python. You're using Python and let's say you want a PyQt5 resource right here. And then you would add like different links to videos on YouTube, um, com slash blah, blah, blah. And th that's just assume this is a video. And then you also have, you have different resources for the database. You have some SQL like documentation here and so on and so on. So this is where you would store your resources. And here you would have the client contact info. So for example, the supermarket, um, its uh, address, it's their phone number and so on. So this, you kind of get the gist. Basically what we're doing is we're filling in the different information that we have in our template. Now going back to our software engineering projects, we can create infinite amounts of projects from this specific template. So I have my supermarket interface project. I can create a new project and let's say this is a uh, banking application and then repeat the same process. So fill in your resources, fill in your client contact info, fill in your to do's and then move this stuff around as you are working on your project. Now, one last thing I actually want to talk about other than the standard way of structuring your software engineering projects with Taskade is brainstorming for your projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. It's going to be completely blank and I'm just going to call it brainstorming um, supermarket. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to be doing it with a feature I really like called the mind map. So going to the mind map, this is how the mind map looks like. Again, I'm going to close this and then we're going to start brainstorming using the mind map. So I'm just going to actually delete this and start by adding a block called the 
um, front end. Okay, so the front end, let's say I want to create the login screen and then I want to create, for example, the main dashboard interface. And then in this interface, let's say, for example, I want to add different UI elements and then I also want to style them. So let's say CSS theme. And then here I'm talking with my teammates and we're brainstorming and we're thinking, OK, how can we actually do the CSS theme? So let's, for example, say a red beige palette or for the colors or, for example, a different type of palette, so a blue beige palette and so on. So now we're just sort of brainstorming ideas for our project. Once we're done brainstorming with the front end, we can say we want to brainstorm the back end. And then I want to also brainstorm here the database. And to brainstorm the database, I can just say, OK, maybe one team member wants to use NoSQL. The, one, the team member that wants to use NoSQL goes, goes ahead to suggest either, let's say, um, OK suggests MongoDB or maybe um, Firebase Firestore and so on. So this is how we are brainstorming this project. And I wanted to show you guys this just this sort of highlight that you not only have to follow the standard scrum or sprint method where you are you have your doing to do's and done different tasks. You can also use Taskade for your software engineering projects to do things like brainstorming your project and writing down your ideas in a sort of really organized mind map. Now you can change this mind map to look like an org chart, for example, which is more of a horizontal looking mind map. You can change it to look like a board again. So the same type of concept that we were looking at before or a list view as well. But personally, I like to, I like to brainstorm my projects using a mind map. So that's really it for this video or for this two-part video series. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. Thank you again, Taskade, for this opportunity to talk about your product. Taskade has really changed my life and made me much more productive ever since I started using it about four months ago. So I really hope this is useful for you and do give the app a try if you really like it. Other than that, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one and bye-bye.